because I, I think that hermeneutics well taught provides people <coughs> with tools and points of clarity and shortcuts into understanding how understanding works and this sort mm -hmm. of thing. But I think that at the end of the day, the really crucial thing is who's teaching it. And the same with homiletics and preaching and all that. I mean, it can all get boiled down to just yeah. rules and principles and discussion uh, versus someone who, who <coughs> himself is under the authority of Scripture and working out the thing with the Bible all the time, all the time, all the time, so that there's the kind of hands-on hands usage you're talking about, then the discussion of hermeneutics and homiletics actually uh, becomes an enriching thing. Here's my problem, sort of, with what you just said. Um, what I hear from guys, sometimes we're talking about hermeneutics is, for example, you need to know the uh, cultural and social milieu at Corinth to know what's going on there. And I want to say now, that's going to totally paralyze everybody unless what you mean is you can see it and discern it best in 1 Corinthians. If you tell me, if you tell the average pastor, you have to do historical research to know the first century Corinth well before you can preach authoritatively from 1 Corinthians, I'm going to say, I think preaching is just about over. No, I, I wouldn't put it uh, along quite that um, antithesis. I mean, I, I take your point. And in the worst, if you take the worst model of one side and the best model of the other side, it works. Um, but on the other hand, God has disclosed himself to us in scripture, in particular people, in particular languages, in particular space-time history. It's an historical revelation. And so even when you do your philology, when you're doing your word studies, you're, you're, doing, you're asking what those words meant at the time. <clears throat> and you're asking how the Greek syntax works. But when they use expressions, uh, when you have a veil over somebody's face, or, 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 or when, when a woman comes in and washes Jesus' feet with her hair when he's at table, I mean, somebody's got to explain that somewhere. I mean, it might not be a major theological point in terms of how he's, how he's reclining at table versus, but somebody's got to explain the, 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 the physical way you hold yourself when you're eating at a feast. And, and so I, I, I never want to say, you've got to get all that before you can preach powerfully. I mean, I'd, I'd rather listen to somebody who's soaked in scripture, who doesn't know any of that stuff, mm -hmm. than, but, but on the other hand, that person is going to make a lot of needless mistakes too. And, and I think that, that while soaking yourself in scripture to become more aware of the word studies and the cultural background can enrich it. I, I'm worried sometimes about preachers who start in the text and go, they're, they're thinking all the time of the application over here rather than bringing people into the text first to see what's going on there and then thinking through. Uh, because otherwise right. the, the, the Bible can become a kind of magic book, mechanical device. Now you right. don't do that, right. but I think you're doing far more cultural and historical exegesis than you're admitting. Well, I, I don't know what I conceded, but what, what, what I want to affirm is that the person who spends 10 hours on the paragraph and its biblical context will probably make fewer <coughs> exegetical mistakes than the person who spends 10 hours reading about Corinth and comes and spends an hour on the text. By and large, I agree with you if you're talking about epistles. If you're talking about chunks that are really heavily embedded with, with language that we don't, reading chunks of Ezekiel, there are lar in terms of the large movement of thought, I think the casual reader can understand it. But there are so, so many idioms and figures of speech and, and, and ways of saying things that you're probably going to need at least some help to get to. Well, to at least some is conceded totally. At least <laughs> some is conceded. I'm talking about yeah. the, the average pastor and, and how he can maintain his balance and his authority. I, I want to encourage him that the vast majority of contextually relevant things, both socially and linguistically, are in the book, are in the book. And if he will be a master of this book, he will probably be a better exegete than the master of historical context. But so you've given me the antithesis <clears throat> again. You give me the answer. No, I just said visit. Yeah. if he yeah. probably will be better. Yeah, well, I agree with that's that. All. Just I agree with that. Probably will be I, better I, if that's what he's the. If you got to be a master of something, master this, and your mistakes will be fewer. I, I admit agree with you that. can make mistakes because oh, you yeah. don't know some Correct. technical phrase so you, or whatever. Yeah. But I agree with that. But right. you'll make more mistakes and worse mistakes if you try to master the <coughs> context and don't linger. I couldn't agree with that more. Amen mm. and amen. Yeah, but I at the same time, as soon as you said that, then I want to put in the footnote. 
<laughs> a footnote is what it deserves. Yeah.